Hi everybody. I wanted to finish sharing the books that I read in January. I made a part one video a couple weeks ago and uh, since then January has ended and I've read I think five more books that I wanted to share with you. So here are the five other books that I read in January. The first one is called Ninth House. It's by Leigh Bardugo. Leigh Bardugo is the author of the Six of Crows duology and I believe she has some other books out as well but uh, I have only read her Six of Crows uh, duology before reading um, Ninth House. And I really enjoyed Ninth House, especially after reading Diviner's trilogy or I guess four book series um, because they share some of the same supernatural elements. Ninth House is a fantasy and supernatural young adult fiction book. Um, it's about this girl named Galaxy who goes by Alex and she has a traumatic past that you don't really know much about at first. Um, all you know is that she was kind of like in recent years discovered completely soaking wet, like surrounded by people who were dead. And um, she's always been able to see what they call in the book greys, which are ghosts. And she gets this invitation from Yale University to come and work as the Dante um, underneath this guy named Darlington. A Dante is just kind of like an intern for, um, for this one a uh, house called Leafy House. At Yale University, there are eight like sacred houses that all practice magic that are kind of under the radar. Nobody really knows about them except for the students who actually are a part of those houses. It kind of makes me think of um, fraternity. And the role of the Leafy House is to oversee those eight other houses and make sure that they're practicing magic safely. Um, and that they're not hurting anybody and that they're keeping it a secret, that they're not doing anything illegal or um, unsafe. This book is set on a dual timeline, switching back and forth between the perspectives of Galaxy and Darlington. And uh, Galaxy, or Alex's perspective, is in the present, kind of continuing with the storyline. And Darlington's is further back in the story. Uh, his perspective is before hers. So not only is it switching back and forth between Galaxy and um, Darlington's perspective, but also uh, in present time and in the past tense. There are a few problems that the plot focuses on in the book. Um, the first problem is that in the present tense, nobody knows where Darlington is. And you don't find out as the reader where he is until the end of the book as well. So you're trying to figure that out along with Alex. And another problem that we see come up in the story is that this young girl, Tara, was murdered and she is supposedly not a student of the university and has nothing to do with the university, but Alex is convinced that um, the reason that she's been murdered has something to do with either Leafy or like magic. One of the eight houses got involved and had something to do with her murder. And so Alex is investigating that as well as trying to figure out where Darlington is. I rated this book five stars. I really liked it and I was kind of bummed that I picked it up actually because the second book isn't out yet and now I have to wait a while for that book to come out. So as soon as it comes out, I'm definitely going to want to read it. But you would enjoy reading this if you like books that have anything to do with like magic or the supernatural, if you like the Diviner series, if you like Leigh Bardugo. You would also like this book if you enjoy reading from different perspectives of different characters' perspectives or different timelines. So yeah, that's Ninth House. The next book I read is a novella by um, Frederick Backman. He's the author of A Man Called Uva and a book I read recently called Anxious People. I love Frederick Backman's book so far. I'm um, gonna definitely wanna read more. The book I read, it's a novella, is called, I'm sorry, this is such a long title. And every morning, the way home gets longer and longer. It's a realistic fiction story and it is centered around this older man who has dementia or maybe Alzheimer's disease. And he is on a walk with his grandson. It's something that they do where they'll go on a walk and like he's supposed to see if his grandson can kind of figure out how to get back home. But really that's not the main plot of the story. If anything, the story doesn't have a plot, but it's really just more focused on the characters and how the family um, deals with this man's dementia 
how the man deals with his own dementia and the loss of his wife. And it's just very heavily focused on the relationships between the characters and it was really heartwarming. I also gave this book five stars, although I give a lot of books five stars. As long as I am invested and I really like the book, it's hard for me to rate it anything less. You would like this book if you like any of Frederick Backman's book. If you're interested in reading books where the main character has Alzheimer's or some other kind of like brain disease, and you would also like this book if you are interested in books that have a lot of emphasis on like character development and relationships rather than um, events building the plot. Another book I read in the month of January is called The Air by Kira Cass. The Air is the fourth book in the Selection series. If you haven't read the original Selection series, I would recommend reading it. The Air is set in the future and it is centered on this young girl named Edelin. She is the daughter of um, King Maxon and the woman that he chose as his um, spouse to marry in the first three books. She is very independent and kind of bratty and entitled and she's kind of a feminist and doesn't want to have really anything to do with boys. She's just getting ready to be queen because she was the firstborn and so she is supposed to take over when her father is no longer king. However, there's a lot of unrest because during the first three books, King Maxon decides to eliminate the caste system and now there is still some prejudice going on between between what used to be the castes and the king and his wife are having a hard time figuring out how to settle that unrest of, for their people. So they encourage Edelin to have her own selection where I think 30 something boys will come to the castle and then she eventually eliminates it down to one to become her husband when she becomes queen. This book is very much like The Bachelorette, whereas the first three books are kind of like The Bachelor, except you're following the perspective of the girl, um, the main female character in the first three series rather than Maxon's, even though it's more like The Bachelor. I rated this five stars, honestly, because I just was so entertained. I love drama and I don't know, it was just fun to read, especially since I'd read the selection series a while ago. You would like this book if you like The Bachelor or The Bachelorette, if you like young adult fiction, if you like books with monarchy systems in them, um, or if you love drama. In January, I also read The Crown, which is also by Kira Cass, and it follows the exact same situation and scenario of the air, but it finishes that whole story for Edelin. So yeah, again, I also rated that five stars because I was hooked, like, I don't know, I just love the drama. The last book I read in January was called Before I Go to Sleep by S.J. Watson. I picked this book up because I was looking for a book that was like you. I was really looking for a thriller that made me feel uncomfortable. And I feel like this definitely did the job except that it left me like wanting more in some areas. The genre is suspense, thriller, and possibly a mystery. This book focuses on the main character named Christine. Every morning she wakes up and she doesn't remember where she is. She sometimes doesn't even really quite remember who she is, although she quickly figures it out. Sometimes she doesn't know how old she is. She feels like she's a little girl or maybe like a woman in her 20s and she doesn't know who the man is in bed with her, who was supposedly her husband, Ben. Christine had an accident a while back and she suffers from amnesia that resets every time she goes to sleep. At the beginning of the book, we pick up where Christine gets a call um, to meet with this doctor that she's apparently been seeing and he hands her back a journal that he says that she gave to him a while ago and she's supposedly been meeting with this doctor in secret. So at the very beginning of the book, she opens up this journal and then a large chunk of the book, like two thirds of the book, is just her reading through her journal entries, her daily journal entries from however many weeks it's been since she started journaling. That's kind of how she catches herself up to date on what's going on in her life and things that she might need to know or remember that she doesn't every single day she restarts this you know, experience. As she's reading through her journal entries, you can see that she's very hesitant to trust Ben, her husband, and she is also keeping the fact that she's meeting with a doctor a secret from him and the fact that she's journaling a secret from him. She's really trying to not only figure out um, kind of what happened to her, but also work on building her memory so that way she can remember things and she can be more independent and not have to start this process 
over and over again every single day. But as she continues to write in her journal and look back, you can see that she is constantly going back and forth about whether or not she should tell Ben about this journal and the fact that she's meeting with the doctor. And she's definitely um, unsure of whether or not she can trust him based on other things that she's written previous days, although she doesn't remember them. She's also struggling with this fear that maybe she's not reliable that even though she wrote it the day before or a couple days before, that maybe she just made it all up because she does have brain trauma and she knows that because of that trauma, she might have been more inclined to write fictional things that aren't true, uh, especially because she used to be an author. This is really an interesting book. I rated this four stars. The reason I didn't rate it five stars is because I felt like um, some things were just I don't know, I felt like not believable. Like, well, I don't think that's exactly what would have happened. I felt like maybe S.J. Watson, the author, uh, had some like easy escapes near the end. And I also felt like the climax wasn't big enough, especially for how suspenseful I was in the story. But aside from those things, I was really enthralled with this book. I enjoyed it. I didn't want to stop listening to it. And I think the fact that I knew for the first two thirds of the book that nothing further was happening in the story. It was just me catching up on everything that had happened over the past two weeks. That was really interesting for me because I felt like, oh my gosh, like I, I kind of felt like Christine where I started my day reading the book, didn't have any idea what was going on. There was no context. And I was having to go back through her entries with her to even figure out what was going on. You would like this book if you like suspense novels. You would like this book if you liked 50 First Dates or Memento because it's kind of a mix between those th those two things. You would also like this book if you enjoy reading from narrators that might be considered unreliable or you like um, reading from the perspective of somebody who's experienced trauma or might have a brain disorder or disease or something like amnesia. So yeah, those are the five other books that I read this month in January. Hopefully you might find one of these books to be interesting and your next book to pick up. In fact, Before I Go to Sleep has also been made into a movie starring Nicole Kidman, which I realized after I finished it. So if you like books that have been made into movies, Before I Go to Sleep might also be another good book for you. But anyway, yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you find something great to read soon and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.